Hi there everybody and welcome back to another episode of Press Teacher the Quiz. My name is Andrew and as always it is fantastic to have you here with me again on a, another whiskey review video. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you for joining me along my journey so far. And if you're new to the channel, then please make sure that you go ahead and hit that bell notification and the subscription button so that you can stay up to date with all future content. Now for those of you who have been following me for some time, you would know that I am a big fan of Starwood. Starwood is an Australian distillery, they are located in Melbourne, Victoria and they have released something new for us. This is the Starwood Unexpeded. Well, sorry, yeah, Unexpeded, that's what it is. <laughs> right there, it says it on the label. Now, as I mentioned, I am a big Starwood fan. I've reviewed quite a few Starwood, uh, Starwood whiskies before in the past, so I'll link a um, yeah, I'll link the playlist in the description down below and you'll have that info card up the top right there. Now, being that this is take three of trying to do this video because I keep fumbling around, I've already poured a little bit into my glass and I don't normally like doing this but since I keep fumbling my notes I'm just going to read um, some of the information that they have on the back of the label because Pretty much whatever I need to say is right there, and I am not going to mess it up. So, um, Unexpeded is a collision of the old world and the new. Our distillers sourced peated, whiskey-soaked barrels from the island of Isla, off Scotland's west coast, and filled them to the brim with our Australian red wine barrel-aged whiskey. Coastal peat characters meld with our delicious single malt to create a whiskey unlike any that we've crafted before. Fully matured in Melbourne, without a peat bog in sight, now that's unexpeded. Now this has been released at 48% ABV and we'll say the casks were filled in 2017 and then bottled in 2021. Alright so let's get on with the review and let's see what we get. So on the nose. On the nose expect ripe fruits Typical apples, pears. Now the typical starward banana note, I'm not getting it. Usually on every starward note, or so, sorry, usually on every starward whiskey I've had, there is always that, um, that starward DNA banana. And I'm not really getting it this time. There is a nice fruity sweetness that's coming through. You definitely notice the the peat and smoke coming through. And that's one thing we've got to remember. Although no like peated malt has been used for this, um, this is all just coming out of those used casks from the, the Isla casks. The nose on this is a lot more similar to a fortified cask so I'm also getting things like raisins prunes and figs nice amount of barrel char bit of saltiness going on now I'm going to have to apologize in advance <laughs> there are some wild cockatoos flying around at the moment they're making a noise and I'm just waiting for Cookie over here to start screeching his head off. I'm hoping that doesn't happen, but um, I've got to be prepared for it. It may get loud. Yeah, it's a nice, nice fruit basket going on right here. Very well balanced nose. I was worried that the uh, the peat elements from the cask were going to overpower the spirit, but that's not going on at all. It is has a really nice balance. I'm also getting notes of vanilla and honey as well. And very light caramel. All right, let's get on with the palette. Cheers. First thing you'll notice is just an amazing and powerful mouthfeel. Full texture, syrupy, it dries out like crazy and this is where some of those Isla notes are really coming in it dries out it becomes ashy and peaty and smoky barrel char straight away on the palate 
and then those notes fade away and that again i'm getting that fortified what's that yeah those fortified wine cast notes that are starting to come through now so more of the figs prunes raisins Again, your orchard fruits are there as well. Apples, pears. I have to say there's a little bit of like orange zest coming along as well. Some, yep, a little bit of caramel. I'm also getting like a, there's a certain sweetness coming through as well. And I think that is something more of like a, um, like a fruit cup syrup. Um... What else? There's more. There has definitely layers to this. It's chocolatey. Expect like a bitter, yep, yeah, bitter dark chocolate. So probably like a 80% dark chocolate. Loads of pepper. I'm getting, say, quite a lot of uh, like white pepper notes coming through. Now, being that they've also used like Australian wine casts in this, there could be some French oak influence coming through. I'm not 100% sure, um, but that is a possibility. It, again, just that, just that balance of flavor that you're getting on the palate is just as just as great as what it is on the nose. Every now and then you get some nice wafting of of smoke and barrel char that comes through. Again, that PD element is not overpowering. So I think if you're somebody that is wanting to get into peated whiskies, this is a good way to start, considering that you are technically not having a, a peated malt, but you have peat elements coming through from the casks used to finish off this whiskey. Um, there, it's just a nice subtle balance coming through that again it just would just make this whiskey a very good entry point for people that just want to dip their toes into the peated world uh the finish it's a little bit rough um but that's not a bad thing you expect that from those higher abvs like i said this is at 48 percent, so it's starting to to get up there into more of like the cast strength um region um again smoky ashy um quite earthy now on the uh on the finish i'm getting more of like a a foresty like a damp foresty note on the finish apples pears so your orchard fruits are there uh let's see what else no nope, i'm still not getting any starwood banana um i think maybe as I get through the bottle, maybe some of those notes may start to come through, but at the moment, this is not your characteristic Starwood whiskey. Um, this is actually something different, which is always an amazing thing, um, because you don't want the same thing all the time. You'd like to be, have something unexpected, so <laughs> um, that is um, that is a positive thing. Uh, also, for the finish, uh, again, those dark chocolate notes are still there, and at the end also the um like orange peel as well so i think that's probably one of the things that i've enjoyed the most about this whiskey so far is that it is not your standard typical starwood uh, i think when you start to try say all different whiskies from one distillery some things can start to taste the same and i'm glad to say that that is not happening with starwood at the moment you do have your core range, which yes, there are their similarities, but when they do these uh, other experimental batches, you will get something different. Um, and that is a, a big plus in, in my books. All right, I think I'll leave it at that. I don't really have anything else to say. I'm going to look forward to enjoying the rest of this and um and the rest of the bottle as well i can't wait to kind of just peel back those layers of it and just see how it opens up over time play around with water as well being that it is at that 48 percent i reckon adding in a couple of drops of water into this will just help mellow it out a little bit more and i should be able to pick out some extra 
extra notes in it. So, all right, I'm going to leave it at that. I'll see you all again on the next video. So, keep this.